You are listening to the Life Coach School Podcast with Brooke Castillo, episode number 257. Welcome to the Life Coach School Podcast, where it's all about real clients, real problems, and real coaching. And now your host, Master Coach Instructor, Brooke Castillo. Well, hello, my friends. I'm so excited. Today, I have all my friends on the line with me and my dog's making a tremendous amount of noise. And I'm so excited to have them on to talk about money and not just a little bit of money. Today, we're going to talk about a lot of money and what it takes to make a lot of money. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast was... I've had a couple people to me recently, like pull me aside and give me a lecture. This actually happens quite often, but not about money as much. And a couple people pulled me aside and told me that it's irresponsible of me to be telling people that they can make a lot of money and that I need to be more realistic and that I need to set people's expectations and I need to stop talking about making millions of dollars and I need to stop talking about how my coaches are making hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. And I think that's insane (laughs) that people are trying to tell me to not talk about the truth. And so I wanted to bring you guys on who are making lots of money as life coaches and talk about what your thoughts are about my people that would like to edit me and talking about money. I want to know what your guys' thoughts are about it. And because you're all in my millionaire mentoring group and we're all working on, some of you are already at a million, some of you are working towards a million. I want to, in this podcast, kind of talk about what we do in that group because everyone's very fascinated and wants to know all the details. And maybe we can talk about it in a way that's really honest so people won't be quite as jealous. (laughs) (laughs) because it is not easy being in that group. We work really hard in there. So let's start with you. Corinne, will you just introduce yourself briefly? I think probably most everyone that listens to my podcast knows you guys, but just introduce yourself a little bit about you and then tell me what your thoughts are about my dissenting opinion of people. (laughs) Well, I'm Corinne Crabtree. I came to the Life Coach School, gosh, it was about three and a half years ago. I had already had a business, but it was what my husband and I like to call my, my weight loss charity that I was giving to the world (laughs) because I didn't charge very much and worked 80, 90 hours a week. And it literally was like doing a charity job, but I came to school because I had, I knew what I wanted to teach. I just didn't really know how to truly impact women's lives the way that I knew I could. Like, I just kind of knew how to cheer them on on their weight loss. Cause I had lost a hundred pounds. I just thought, well, everybody should be able to lose a hundred pounds. And yeah, right. Kind of where I was at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Everybody should get to do that. <laughs> you have a hundred pounds to lose. But, so uh, at that time when you had that business, what were you thinking about in terms of like making money? Because I think you were probably at the place where a lot of these people are, where they think it's hard to make money. Yeah. I thought it was hard. I thought it was honestly like like I didn't value myself very much. I think I had a lot of carryover from my weight loss that also mm. translated into making money that for some reason, um, like who am I to ask people to pay me for my expertise? You know, there was just a lot of that kind of crap going on. Mm. But for me, it was like I had a diehard passion to help women. I just didn't understand that it was okay to get paid to do so. Whoa, and yeah. I was taking away from my family. I mean, that was like, I think the biggest thing that I came to grips with over the last few years was, you know, I was very passionate about helping them and like really taking away from my own family. I didn't even realize what I could even give back to my life and yeah. while I'm giving to other women. So, yeah. So what do you think about this idea that, I mean, cause you're, you're making a million dollars. Yeah. Can we tell people that? Yes, we can tell people that. I think my clients figure it out on their own. <laughs> I really just feel like, I know that lots of people don't like to talk about how much money they make, but I feel like for us, you know, I'm not going to force anyone to do it. I just feel like it's so important for us to share our successes with other people to show them what's possible and to let these kind of dissenting opinions know, like, we're not making this up. And, and here's what I want to say is true and possible and, and make sure that you're really clear when Corinne and I are sitting here talking about her making a million dollars, we're not talking about her selling a million dollars and she's waiting on that money. We're not talking about her making a million dollars over the past five years 
and right. adding that all up and calling it a million dollars. We're not talking about her hoping she's going to make a million dollars next year, which I think a lot of people throw around numbers that just aren't true. She made a mil- more than a million dollars mm-hmm. last year. Solid. She will pay taxes on a good portion of that yes. as a life coach, right. helping people lose weight from her desk in her house. So right. if you want to know what's realistic, that is what's realistic. Now, yeah. what do you think about people saying that it isn't? I think it's bull crap. I, I just <laughs> like, seriously, I'm just, I think we're in this day and age now where if you want to go out and make money in this world, doing things you feel passionate about, there is no better time in the universe for it to be happening than it is right now. Yeah. I mean, it just is, it, the possibility is all there and you don't even like, I mean, we joke around all the time. I'm like probably the most uneducated person that you have. I didn't even go to college. Right. What I did was I got a million dollars on the internet. Okay. So what about people that say, okay, then it must be a scam. It's not a scam. This is the thing like, and I have done a lot of work on this. I used to feel bad about charging money Mm. or, you know, helping people accomplish their dream, which is losing weight. Yeah. When I got over that and started really understanding the idea of making this a business yeah. rather than feeling bad about what I might be taking from someone, I have helped thousands of more women. Right. Like this year alone, I can't even believe how many women are going to lose weight because I decided to start running a business and not just playing around with it. Right. And having some money so you can spend to make that business even better yes. for the people that are paying you. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. love investing in just like the education, the knowledge, the stuff that I give them. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I love it. And that's why I wanted to have you guys on and talk about this because I think it's actually more irresponsible to tell people that it's not possible. I kind of feel like, I'm like, you guys, this is how I feel. I'm like looking at you all on, on the Zoom video. I'm like, we need to tell people. Mm. Yes. We need to let them know. Like, we can do this. We can do yes. this. And I feel like there's never been a time more perfect with opportunity for women. A lot of us are moms at home with our kids that want to make a contribution in an industry that helps people. And we want to make money and not apologize for it. So, right. awesome. I, I agree. And one thing I wanted to say, too, is like... I love the idea. Like I had always like dreamed of being able to do great things for my family. I didn't think I would ever be able to do that because I didn't go to school and stuff. Mm. And these days, just the possibility that we have, it's like, if you just allow yourself to dream big and be like, I'm going to change my family's life. I'm building like my son's retirement. I never, I mean, good Lord. I was talking the other day if I want to one day be able to do for my mother the way she did for me, I'll be able to do that. Yes. You know, yeah. it's like, we're not out there just making money to make money. I mean, there's so many amazing things that go along with it. So, And yeah. by the way, if you're out there just to make money, to make money, that's okay too. Yeah. Right? I feel like a lot of, I know that you're not that way and I'm not that way either, but I kind of want permission that if I want to be that way, I want to be that way because I feel like a lot of times I hear people, women talking about making money, talking about making lots of money. And then there's like on the back end of it, like this silent apology where it's kind of like, but you know, I give a lot of money to charity or I'm a philanthropist. And I almost feel like, I want everyone that's like all of my students to do that if that feels true to them and authentic to them and never tell anybody. Like do that because you do it for you. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's like I tell my chicks that want to lose weight to look hot. Yeah. I'm like, then do that. Like, Yeah, hell yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I was like, there's a big part of my weight loss. I was just ready to be hot. Yeah, (laughs) that's right. That's right. With no apology. I love it. What about you, Stacey? Tell us a little bit about you and what you think about being realistic when it comes to money. <laughs> Listen, I'm over here like geeking out, like preach. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love making money and I love yes. talking about money. And I just like dare someone to come to me and try to make me feel bad about that or like make me feel bad for teaching that. So yes. I'm <laughs> yeah. So tell us what you teach. So they understand what you're talking about. So I help life coaches make money. 
lots and lots of money. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in my, in my 2k group, it's like all day long. People are calling. I just signed my first client. I just made $2,000. I just made $28,000. Like I've created this community where it's not just acceptable to talk about money, but like, let's do this all day, every day, totally encouraged, celebrated. So good. I think we should all make more money. Yeah. I love it. So there is a concern legally for me, like about selling life coaching and telling people that they can go make money, right? Because there's a lot of organizations that do multi-level marketing that make income claims that aren't realistic, quote unquote, for people. And so they get in trouble for doing that. And so whenever I talk to the attorneys about that, they're always like, but I mean, come on can people really do this? Like, can, is this legitimately a way for people to make money? I'm like, yes, like I'm not a unicorn. This is a real opportunity for people. There's nothing scammy about it. It's all legit. It's all open. And I think there's the the sense of like distrust about something that seems like, and I even kind of have been brainwashed to feel this way too. Like you'll hear me talk (laughs) sometimes and I'm like, where are the adults? are we allowed to do this? Are you just allowed to like have a business on the internet and make money? I'm always asking my accountant, are we doing everything right? And the truth is a hundred percent we are. So I'm sure some of your clients have the same kind of. Yeah. And my clients come with shame too. Like, you know, I didn't really experience the shame of making money until I started talking about my million dollar goal. And until I started making a lot of money, Mm -hmm. I remember when I was making just like hundreds of thousands of dollars, that it's so interesting. That seemed socially acceptable. Like, and I think I was in the place where my mind was just so blown all of the time of like, this is possible. I can't believe this is my life. And Mm -hmm. so I was always sharing from a place of just like genuinely, like, I can't believe this was possible. And I did it. Uh, But I, I did start getting blowback when I increased my goals and started talking about my million dollar goals. Mm. And my, even my clients started like questioning my intentions. And, you know, so many of my clients experience that where they're afraid to talk about how much their m- money they're making, especially if they're not in the business coaching world. And mm. this is my simplistic way of talking about like, this is what I tell them. And this is what I tell myself. Like for me, it takes too much energy to censor myself. Mm. And when I am transparent with just everything, and everything is an open book, even sometimes too much. So I just don't have to think about like, what should I say? And what shouldn't I say? Yeah. None of my brain space goes to that, which I love think that. Love that. All right, Rachel, I want to talk to you about this. All right. Well, Introduce I'm Rachel yourself. Hart. Tell us who you are. Yeah. I'm Rachel Hart. So I work with women who want to stop over drinking mm. and it's been incredible for me to be part of this group. I mean, I think just, I think the thing that was so powerful, you know, the first time that I was in Dallas and sitting around the table with these women, is just to like be in the presence of other women who are thinking at this high level yeah, and talking about like what is possible and what we can create. And just to, just to see other women there, like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, this is amazing. And I realize how powerful it's been for me to be around that and to start to look at my brain and what my brain has been telling me is possible and isn't possible. Mm-hmm. And, and also, you know, you create a business and it's the best way to see like all your thinking. Yes. Everything your brain wants to like, tell good you. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so true. All those thoughts, all those beliefs. It's like your business becomes a real world example of what you think is possible and yeah. what you think is okay to put out in the world and what isn't okay and what's okay to share and what isn't. It's been, I mean, just that piece of being an entrepreneur, which also like feels really cool to say that. Yeah. Yeah. You're an entrepreneur. Has- Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. I think it's challenging to be an entrepreneur in so many ways, right? Because we have to face all of our own stuff. But I do think a lot of our kind of socialized beliefs around money and about what we should make money doing. And I've thought a lot about our niche. You know, we share a niche with over drinking. I work with people over drinking as well. And a lot of the feedback when I first introduced that niche to people was like, you shouldn't charge people. Mm -hmm. I said, well, they can go get it for free somewhere else, but I'm using it as a business. And I've thought so much about that. Like you shouldn't charge people to give them something that will change their lives for the rest of their lives for better, right? Nobody said, ever said like, 
why are you charging people for, you know, these great devices that you're doing or this wonderful software? Why? Nobody ever says that. It's totally okay to charge for that. It's totally okay to charge for super nice, fancy cars. No one's like, oh, you should just give those away. But we get those messages, right? Oh, if you're in the helping profession, you know, you shouldn't be charging for stuff like that. You shouldn't charge for people when they're in pain, which I think is ridiculous, not only for us as business women owners, but also for the clients. You know, I teach this all the time. Like it's so important for people to be willing to invest in themselves for their results. And and that money exchange is the magic that happens, not just for us as business owners, but also for them for investing in themselves. So have you felt any of that specific pushback? Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating, right? Because I think it really is what happens when you go all in on Mm -hmm. yourself and what, like what it actually looks like and feels like to make an investment in yourself. And the fact of the matter is there are a lot of free resources out there and there are people who will just listen to the podcast and listen and listen and listen, but why aren't they taking action? Yes. What does it just mean to, I, I think people don't realize that you can just buffer with learning. You know, right. you, you, you can just sit back and learn and learn and learn and tell yourself, I need another piece of information. I need to know something a little bit more before I finally step out and take that action. But- well, and take the risk and take, you know, the, when you put money down on yourself, that's when you're taking the risk. That's when you're like, okay, am I really serious? Yeah. And then you show up very differently. Yeah. Yeah. So you had told us a story that you had told someone your price and they were like, come on. Like, really? That's what you're charging? Kind of like in a condescending like like tone. And I've had that experience as well. And I think that one of the reasons why I like to talk about money and making money and embracing it and celebrating it in the way that I do, because I know, of course, I know that I'm a good person serving as many people as I possibly can, that whatever people say to me, I'm like, fine. I'm not talking to them, actually. I'm talking to you. So there's another woman right now that's listening to us talking that maybe wants to be an over-drinking coach that's afraid to charge money, right? And she's like, what? I know Rachel. She's an amazing person. I know Brooke. She's an amazing person. I know they're not scamming people and they're making lots of money. I want to like create the collective because (laughs) for me, I always talk about loving money, but I don't just love it for me. Like I want everybody to have it. Like this is what I just told my girlfriend. This is why I made her, my girlfriend, Chris, join this group is I'm like, dude, you don't have enough money. How are you going to travel with me? Get in this group. You got to make more money. We got to do the things together. We got to make these things happen. So yeah. And I, I think it's interesting for you too, because, you know, I've coached you for a while and all of the things that you've overcome personally, you know, to stop over drinking and then now the money stuff and like being able to be around it and celebrate it. It's just, well, I mean, it's so fascinating, right? Because once you start doing this work of managing your mind, I just see that those, all the thoughts that I had about drinking and, Hmm. oh my God, it won't be possible to enjoy life. I'll never be able to do it. You know, all the kind of doom and gloom. (laughs) I'm just like, oh, hi, here you are. (laughs) Like now you're just popping up with my business. Yeah, just a different language. Yeah, it's like just a different language, but like, oh, I've heard you before. Yes, I'm familiar with you. And it really is this kind of crazy thing that once you do something, I really truly believed that a life without alcohol was a life where I would be physically healthy, but emotionally, I would just suffer yeah. and I would always feel like I was missing out and I would always feel abnormal and I would always feel like I was the killjoy in the room. Mm-hmm. I really, truly believe that. And then to be on the other side and realize, oh, I was totally wrong. Mm-hmm. Like life isn't just, oh, I feel physically healthy. Life is amazing. Yes. Life has opened up for me in ways that I never even dreamed was possible because I was spending all this time cleaning up from the night before and worrying about my drinking and wondering, will I ever be able to change it and what's wrong with me? And so to do that, I think has really just kind of opened the door to say like, okay, so what else am I telling myself is impossible? And definitely, of course, I've encountered that with money goals. Yeah. Because it's impossible to make money. Yeah. Well, especially a million dollars. Especially. I mean, I was thinking about this today when I was preparing for this podcast. And I was thinking when you, it used to be when I was younger, if being a millionaire was like you lived in this huge mansion and you had a moat, 
right? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have the most. You know? And now it's like, we're making a million dollars. We're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Where's my moat? <laughs> Where's my moat? I can't afford a moat. <laughs> but some of you guys have heard me talk about my overdrinking journey on the podcast. And I referenced someone that had said to me, my life is so much better now that I'm not drinking. That was Rachel. She was a student in one of my classes and I was still drinking and she was in a student in the class. And she said, oh my gosh, my life is, I'll never forget. I can like picture where she was sitting, what she said, everything. My life is so much better now. And she was so sincere. And that really was a huge turning point for me and like understanding. And you were right, Rachel Hart. (laughs) My life is better. Is it? Yes. We also have Brenda O'Malley on the line with us. Hi, everyone. What do you think about this money stuff, Brenda? I love it. And I, before we jump into questions and things, I actually want to thank you, Brooke, for being unrealistic and irresponsible, as they are saying. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much because I, like, I think about my life and my parents immigrated to the U.S. Like, mm-hmm. growing up, I mean, actually, my dad is still a gardener. Like we, he actually just helped us put grass in our backyard, which was really nice and awesome. But, and I, I grew up like going to work with my mom, cleaning houses and all that. And so, you know, someone could be like, oh, that's unrealistic. And that's irresponsible for you to tell this person that like no one around me is doing this kind of thing. Yeah. And that might be like the most common belief but I'm, I'm glad you told me that other things were possible. And yeah, what's the alternative? I'm like, now, Brenda, there's so I many alternatives. It, but you can't, you need to be realistic. Like, I, I don't even know what these people want me to say out loud. Like, listen, you can probably make 50 grand. It, that's a lie. That's a lie. You can make so much more than that. Right. Yeah. And like, now that I have, Yeah, it's so much fun to see that. And for sure, I'm glad that you said, you know, we can talk about all the reasons like how it's not fun all along the way, because there is so many fears like my January this month already with my bigger goals is like, I have been wanting to like throw up and just like feel so (laughs) scared. I actually in January, there was one day specifically that I remember thinking, oh my gosh, why did I share like how I've been doing and why did I share my new big goal? Because now I'm like, holy crap, like I just felt so scared and like yes. all this stuff, but it's totally worth it because it is, it's like what Rachel was saying. I really do believe like what I want to do and what I want to create and specifically because we're talking about money. Yeah. Specifically, I want to make seven figures in my business. Yeah. And that's going to happen. And I believe I'm capable. And I literally know that the only thing that would keep me from that is my own like self limiting beliefs. Of course. And if it, all it takes is me being willing to feel uncomfortable and like scared and all of that, then I'm like, let's do it. It's uncomfortable, but I've done it before. I'm just going to keep doing it. It's so interesting because even hearing you say that, makes it sound like it's too easy, right? So when we say here on the podcast, now most of my listeners are all in, but let's say like they have like the neighbor in the back seat and they're like, what's this lady talking about? Come on, just believe it. This is the secret all over again, right? Just just wait for it in the mailbox. I think it's so interesting, to, but it is true that you have to believe it, but then you also have to go to work. Oh, And one totally. of the things that we teach in that I teach in this millionaire mentoring program is it's never at the expense of your own self. And so when we're in this group talking, there are many times where some people will have bigger goals than I recommend for them. And sometimes people have goals that are smaller than I recommend for them. And it's because, and this is how you guys know if you're on track about this, if you're feeling this pressure to hurry and set a big goal so you can prove something to the world, you're doing it wrong because you'll never get there fast enough. And when you do get there, you'll realize that you're just the same person with more money in your bank account and a whole set of new problems that you didn't have before. Yes, you have different problems, but they're still there. And so I think that a lot of, you know, what we talk about in, and one of some of the things that 
Brenda, you and I have talked about is, you know, when we first talked about you coming into the group, I'm like, we're going to do this right. I want to make sure you're ready because one of the beliefs, and, and this is something I wanted to share with everyone. So as you're thinking about our group, the first thing I wanted to share was it's all cash collected. When we talk about a million dollars, nobody in the life coach school gets an award unless they prove that that's cash collected, period. That has to be money that you actually took in. We also talk a lot about managing debt. We don't go into debt to make big revenue dollars. Most, I think all of us are at at least 50% profit margins. Many of us are at much higher than that. So I think it's really important that you guys understand, not only are we totally realistic, but we're like crazy realistic and the numbers are still there, right? You know, I think a lot of organizations go out there. I mean, even like software companies, they're making millions of dollars, but they're spending the exact same amount. They're like going in debt with no profit margin. Yeah. Actually, you had this group one year ago and I was almost going to start one year ago in this program. And after meeting with you one-on-one, you did tell me like, you know, I don't think you're ready. And you gave me certain things to like address and handle. Some of them were debt and like just getting things really profitable first. And that's, you know, another thing that you were saying about like getting to work. I think another big, huge thing is patience. Like when you gave me that feedback, I was just like, all right, no big deal. My goal is still seven figures. Mm -hmm. It's just going to take me this time to like do this, do this, learn this. And like now it, you know, that's just going to be, the path is going to be a little bit different. The timeline's a little bit different, but you know, I needed to learn those things and I was able to do those things, get them taken care of. And now here I am. And it's like, yeah, I'm willing to, for it to take however long it's going to take. I'm willing to put in whatever kind of work, learn whatever I need to learn in order to achieve that. So, well, yeah, because here's what you guys need to know. All of you, some of you listening to this are probably at six figures. Some of you may be wanting to make a million dollars. Some of you may think that's the craziest amount of money in the world. First thing I want to tell you is it's not the craziest amount of money in the world. It's just adding zeros to what you're already doing. But here's what's true. This is honest to God truth. You have to think about your business right now. And you have to look at all the details of it, what you love about it, what's hard about it, what's easy about it. When you grow it, each one of those things in that business will just get bigger. Mm -hmm. So if you want, if you have a lot of debt and you want to grow, the debt will grow with you. If you have a lot of expenses, the expenses will grow with you. And so one of the things Brenda and I talked about with her business, even though her revenue was really there, I think you were at like 300 or something ready to go to a million. I said, let's, whoa, let's slow down and make sure that we can get the debt, the organization, you were hiring people, your income to hiring ratio was off stuff. So we cleaned that all up. And now I feel like so much more confident taking you to the next thing because you guys, what, I just got an email from someone and they were talking about how is it possible that I can make as much money as I do and only work three days a week? That's the other thing I'm lying about, by the way, they think mm-hmm. I'm lying about. And it's because I took my time to set it up right and do it right. So here's kind of our rules for millionaire mentoring. This is what I expect from everybody is you have to tell us the cash-based truth. We're focused on profit. No hurry, stress, or workaholism. Now there's a couple of these ladies that we had to work on. (laughs) Corinne, you were a little bit of a workaholic in the beginning. I I was, yeah. Yeah. That's been probably the best thing that I've learned through this group is I've learned how to slow down and think smarter and more deliberate. And I know my clients have like tenfold paid off on that. Like that lesson alone has helped me be very good about teaching them in a way that really helps them because it's, you know, it all mirrors. Cause I mean, when you're trying to lose weight, what is the one thing everybody wants? They want it right. They want to hustle. (laughs) They don't want to learn how to do it right. And so by me learning how to run my business, right, it really taught me how to streamline them on their thinking around their weight loss too. That's so good. That's so good. I think that, um, one of the beautiful things about making a million dollars, and I tell, I've told this to Stacey a lot. I'm like, you can't, because Stacey, she's our hustler, man. She can sell you anything. Because- <laughs> <laughs> yes, <you can>. Damn well. <laughs> Walmart, y'all. You better back up. But here's the thing. You can't hustle your way to eight figures. You can probably hustle your way to a million, but it's going to kill you. I have one girlfriend. She's a life coach. She's pretty popular. And she made a million dollars. She called me. She's like, I need a nap. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> 
<laughs> because it's just not sustainable, right? So you have to, th- and this is one of the reasons, you guys, why I love making a million dollars, thinking about making a million dollars is it makes you think at such a higher level, plan at such a higher level, live your life at such a higher level. And I've watched Corinne and Stacy, who are both on this call, and we have, we're going to do a part two of this and have the other ladies that, that aren't on here, but we're just watching them calm down and make more money is so fascinating. You know, like Quinn was like always worried about everything and always worried about her girls and always worried about everything and everything. And now she's just like, I'm like, Corinne, you, you good? <laughs> she's like, I'm good. I'm good. Everything's good. And same with Stacy. you know, you had all that energy and now it, you know, it's, you still have all the energy. It's just channeled in a way that's serving you and producing from abundance. Yeah, for sure. Well, but, and also I will say the biggest shift for me has been, you know, I remember like the first six months of million dollar mentoring of last year, Yeah, I was not sleeping. Like my brain was thinking about making a million dollars, not in a healthy way, uh. like all through the night. Like I could literally, I would wake up and be like, oh my God, I have to stop thinking about this next launch. I have to stop yeah. thinking about this thing that hasn't been done, but it was like, I was trying, my brain was just like trying to just get there as fast as possible, as fast as possible. And of Mm. course I didn't have all the, the tools yet. And I didn't have all the stuff in place. And so it was just, was this like constant spinning. And now I'm like four o'clock I'm done. Yeah. Turn it off. Go to bed. I don't think about it at all. And yeah. So and, and here's one of the things you guys, and I remember a conversation that I had with Stacy about this that I'll share with you guys is, you know, she's like, I want to make a million. I want to make a million. I want to make a million. And it is called millionaire mentoring. So <laughs> I'm all, listen, I'm all about a million. And I kept telling her, I'm like, no, you're not ready yet. Like you need to slow. We need to clean some stuff up. And she was like, uh, Stacy doesn't like to be told what to do, <laughs> <laughs> to do as often as possible. <laughs> Like when you told me to change my entire yeah, like, change everything. creation offering and all the things. It's fine. But here's the thing. When you're in a hurry to do it, it makes me believe and know that you're not believing in it, right? So if you believe you can make a million dollars, you don't have to do it tomorrow. You don't have to do it next week. The reason why a lot of us are in a hurry to make our money, whether for some of you that's 100K, for some of you it's a million, is because we want to hurry up and believe it. We got to prove that we believe it because we don't yet believe it yet. And believing something is a process. It's a total identity change. And so that is part of the process. It's not just push, 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 make it, make it, make it at all costs. Because everyone will be tired. I will be tired. And here's the thing I want to teach you and all you podcast listeners and also you guys who are in Millionaire Mentoring. I want to teach you how to make a million dollars from your mind. Because if I teach you tactics on how to make a million dollars, everything's going to change, right? And I do teach tactics and we do talk tactics. But what's most important is you know how to make a million dollars with your mind. You'll be able to do it again and again. And then you'll be able to make two and then four and then eight. Like if you understand how the mind works, that's how you can produce it. I can teach you how to do a funnel and a Facebook ad. But eight years from now, that's not going to serve you right? If you understand how to manage your mind. And so for me, a million dollars or losing a hundred pounds or stopping drinking, those are all impossible goals. For many of my podcast listeners, they can't even imagine losing a hundred pounds. They can't even imagine losing 10 pounds, right? Let alone a hundred, stopping drinking or making a million dollars. And people are like, and don't tell them it's possible. I'm like, are you kidding me? when we tell ourselves that that's possible, that's when we get to work on ourselves. That's when like what Rachel said is all of the stuff comes up that we need to work on and we learn how to believe. Go ahead, Stacey. And I think too, one of the other things that that has been the biggest transformation for me that I learned in Million Dollar Mentoring was the problem solving process and the making decisions process. Like so many of my clients, and I know this for all business people are probably like this, where we want to hire someone to tell us exactly what to do. Like what should be my freebie? What should be my, you know, pricing? What should be this? What should be that? And you just taught us like, you've got to go out and figure it out. You've got to be willing to put something out there and just see based on like your Facebook ad. Like, I don't know if your ad works. I don't know if your webinar title works. You've got to go out there and see, does it convert or not? And, you know, for me, I was listening to so many other people, my Facebook ads person and my, you know, just everybody around me, I was waiting for them to tell me 
how to make the decision for my own business. And you're like, you need to make the decision for your business and be willing to keep trial and erroring that as you go. And that was profound for me. Yeah. It's huge. It's, It's just like us, Corinne, right? Everyone wants to just tell me what you eat. Right. (laughs) And I'll eat what you eat. I'm like, some of you are going to eat what I eat and you're going to get heavier. Some of you are going to eat what I eat and you're going to starve to death. What I eat is irrelevant and what I do for my business. And that's, that's the beauty of building a business. (laughs) I was just talking to one of my employees about this and he's like, I think we should give everyone more structure on exactly what they need to do, build their business. And I said, that's the last thing they need, right? Because in school, we're given all this structure. So if we give our students structure, they're going to do what we tell them to do and fill out the worksheets and check all the boxes. And they're going to wonder where their business is. And that's how school works. You get an A, but you can't do enough paperwork to get a business. (laughs) You know how you get a business? You got to bleed. Like That's what I told him. I'm like, there's no other way around it. Can you imagine if I could give someone a checklist on how to build a business? I mean, I come as close as most people do, but it's still not enough, right? You have to. And that's what makes it so amazing, right? Is that you have to come to terms with yourself. In school, you learn how to succeed to get an A. And in life, you learn how to fail (laughs) to build a business. Mm -hmm. It's like the exact opposite. You have to learn how to fail in order to create an amazing company. So making a million dollars is super cool. Like we all delight in it. And I want to share that with you because that's one thing I have some friends in a different group and they're like, what's crazy about you, Brooke, is you make so much money and you just delight in it. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, someone come and came and cleaned my room today when we were at this event together. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, isn't it great that people clean the kitchen for us? And like, I'm paying for all of it, but I still delight in every piece of it. But I also bleed, right? I also wake up. Brenda, you were just talking about how in January your numbers weren't maybe right exactly where you wanted them to be. My yeah. numbers were either. I'm like, forget it. We're all going to die. This business yeah. isn't going to work. We have to give it all. Like my brain was like, see, I told you nothing good ever lasts. Yeah. I thought about that right now when you said in real life, you fail to succeed. Yeah. yeah. I basically had to remember that in January. Cause I was like, but I set these goals. I'm supposed to like hit them. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh, right. This is the part where I'm learning how to do the new thing I'm trying to do that yeah. I've never done before. <laughs> exactly. And here's the truth. The people that will make it to a million and beyond are the people when they don't meet their January goals are curious about it versus quit, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or people that stand on the scale and have gained two pounds. They're like, weight loss doesn't work in the universe. Yep. <laughs> I was thinking about this today. Like, I want to go up to people and be like, it is never too late. There is never a point in your life where you can't decide to lose weight if that's what you want, where you can't mm-hmm. decide to stop drinking. I was reading this quote. It said, no matter how far you've gone down the wrong road, no matter how far that road is, turn around. (laughs) Right? You're like, but I've just been walking for so long. It doesn't matter. That is the wrong way. Right? And so that's what we have to do in our businesses. That's what we have to do in our lives. So even though being in these groups is is tough, right? For some of us, because some of us are struggling, but the good news is, is it seems like we balance out. Like half of us are in hell while the other half of us are winning. So we're like, hey, remember it gets better. (laughs) I'm buying a Tesla and this person's like, ah, I can't sell anything. (laughs) Facebook hates me. Life is terrible. Right. And then it worked (laughs) out. And that's what being part of a group like this is so, is so awesome. So there's just a few more things I want to talk about that we talk about in Millionaire Mentoring. One of them is service. You cannot build a business based on selfishness. It just won't work. I think that's great news, right? I think the good guys always win because when you're in a place like where you're talking about, Brenda, where your numbers aren't there and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be meeting these goals. What's happening? As soon as you start feeling sorry for yourself and you will, please, all of you remember, you will feel sorry for yourself because you didn't make 100K and then you're going to feel sorry for yourself because you didn't meet your $5.5 million, right? It doesn't Mm -hmm. matter. It's never going to go away. As soon as you start feeling sorry for yourself, Remember who you're serving and that changes everything. Remember why you're doing it. And that just shifts your focus, puts you right back in service. I won't work with anyone in any of my groups that isn't 100% in love with their client and in service. And it's also important not just to be in love with your client, but to be in love with your business 
right? Yeah. And to love your business and to care for it in a way that you end up serving your business and not demanding from it. Does anyone want to say anything about that? Yeah, I think it's really important. Like I really recognized it for a while. I desperately wanted to be a life coach and I wanted to have a business. And then I became a life coach and I had a business and I started hating my business. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but it was the thing that I really recognized is that so much of the language that I had used and abused myself with mm. for a very long time, I had just transferred it over to the business. So interesting. Yeah. And you just start to really recognize that, uh, oh, that language, like it, it doesn't serve me when I use that language against me. It's not going to serve my business. Of course not. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I hear a lot of people talk about their business in a way, like coaches are like, oh, my business isn't making me any money. Or, oh, my business isn't hitting its goals. Oh, my business isn't working. And I noticed this. It doesn't matter what's going on in my business. I never talk about it that way. I have so much reverence for my ability to have a business and how much it serves me. And when I think about my business, it's, I'm not thinking about the people in it. I'm talking about even when it was just me. Your business is kind of like this entity that is, for me, the way that I think about it is like this entity that serves the world. It's my contribution. So why in the world would I ever put it down. And by the way, if you are doing this, you guys listening to this, if you're doing this, it's just your brain being your brain. Don't be mad at yourself about it, but just notice it and be like, ah, oh, interesting. My business is so hard. Like think about how you talk about your business. My business demands too much of my time. It's so overwhelming. Think about your business as a person. Can you imagine saying that? <laughs> a God, Corinne, she's so overwhelming all the time. <laughs> She's so demanding. Like if you wouldn't talk about someone you love like that, don't talk about your business like that. Okay. I love mine. I, I delight in it. Like when you talk about delighting in money, like I delight in my business. It is, and I think it's because it's, there's just no better way to give back. I mean, I just, I'm like, I'm getting paid to actually change people's lives. I mean, how, like how lucky are we to be able to figure out a way to help people and still create a business. And, and I was even talking about this the other day, like other people now rely on me for their livelihood. They're chasing their dreams. I have right. coaches that have left their full-time careers to be with me. And like, they're like, I love what I'm doing now. I'm yeah, just this like, is my dream job. They're yes. telling you, this is my dream job working for you. Yes. Yes. It's just an amazing, I'm just telling you those people who are telling you that crap, you need to just like delete their email. <laughs> <laughs> But I think but it's, I want to speak to him. Go ahead. It's not believing that transformation is possible, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what all of this is. Yeah. Like everything that you feel like is impossible is that sense of like, oh, I, transformation won't happen for me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's made up. I can't do it. And I think that that, like, that piece, like when you actually believe, I was doing a lot of coaching work because I always do a lot of coaching work on myself, but the, the word that I came up with that I haven't, I haven't realized I haven't used a lot and I want to with myself is unstoppable. Yes. And I found that word and I was like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, isn't, this it, isn't it funny when people say to me, don't get their hopes up? Yeah. I'm like, why not? <laughs> I think we should all get our hopes up. <laughs> Good things happen when your hopes are up. Where do yeah. we want our hopes? We want our hopes down. Get their hopes down. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I just think it's insane. I actually don't think these, I think these people are trying to be well-intended. I, I think it's jarring to hear me talk about making $17 million. For, I get all the skeptics that think I'm lying and then I get the people that think I should keep my mouth shut and then I get people that should tell me that I should let other people know that I'm special and they can't do the same thing. And of course I do the exact opposite. <laughs> I tell everybody all the time and I tell everybody that they can do the exact same thing and that they should and they should be excited about it. But I also tell them that it's hard and it's totally worth it. All right. So let's end this. I knew that we could like talk for three hours, but we got to tone it down. We got to bring it back. We won't tone it down. We'll just shorten it down. Here's what I want you guys to think about. What would be your advice? There are people right now who are brand new coaches or maybe they're making 50,000, 75,000. Maybe some of them are making... 300,000, they want to make a million. What would be your advice to them, message to them? What would you say to them if they look at us or they hear us talking about this and they think, 
there's no way I can't do that. And most of you that are doing that, the, what you're thinking in your head is, I can't work that hard. I can't do that. I'm already working 12 hours a day. I can't work anymore to make that happen. Or I don't have it in me or I don't know how. What would you say to them? I'll start with you, Stacey. I think I would say like, I have this kind of concept that I talk about a thousand ready clients. Mm -hmm. And I just think if you knew there were a thousand people, even for everybody's in a different place, if you knew there were a hundred people that like desperately needed your help and were waiting for you right now, Mm -hmm. would you figure out how to figure it out? Would you get working even when you're tired or you're overwhelmed? Like, because I think you're right. You can't do it for yourself beyond where you start making more money than you can spend. Right. Like the, the hard work has to come from a different place. And for me, like the fire is always lit so hot inside of me because I know how many people are waiting to get help. And yeah. so that's what I think about all of the time. And I think, I think that cures every other excuse that comes your way. Yeah. And if you have the heart of service, that's all, that's all you need to fuel you. I remember when I wrote my first book and I was like so freaked out to put it out in the world because I was sure there was going to be a typo and that there was probably like a comma in the wrong place, whatever, lots of them. And um, I just remember thinking like, even if one person reads this and stops suffering about their weight, that's all that matters. I say that for everything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's everything. That's the truth. Like, and I love your work so much, Stacey, because it's all about, we have a responsibility to sell to people because selling is really just coaching them that the result is possible, especially when it's coaching. When we're selling coaching, what we're selling is someone's possibility in their own life, truly, and their their value and how worth it, it is for them to invest in themselves. Yeah. And if you hadn't done that for me, I just talked about that on one of my episodes. Like if you had it, like I came to you, I had no money. I'm like traveling around the country with a stage in my trunk and like kitchen slicers in my back seat. Right. (laughs) I'm in a Walmart in Arkansas and I get on the phone with you and like, you didn't have any judgments about how I couldn't pay or if I was your right client and you didn't like tell yourself that I couldn't do it or that it would be irresponsible. And Mm -hmm. at the time you weren't even talking about like money or business, like you hadn't even introduced your business coaching part of the life coach school, right? but you were just offering, like, I can certify you and teach you how to be a coach. And if you hadn't been willing to let me figure out the money, and let me figure out my own way, I wouldn't be here today. And so Mm. I'm always telling people like, it's your moral obligation to sell someone a life better than what they have right now. Yeah. You're really capable of giving it to them. That's such a good point. Like, who am I to say that you shouldn't become a life coach just because you didn't have any money? Yeah. And right. I wasn't going to like reduce my fee because I know how important it is for you to invest in you. So, and here's what's so funny is you came to me and I could have been like, oh, she's not my avatar. Yeah. <laughs> She's not my <laughs> ideal this, this client. Because not my ideal money, client. Right. But you had so much heart and you wanted to do it so much. So I love your work for that much because for that reason, and I think selling and money all has kind of that connotation. And I, I'm going to do as many podcasts like this as I can until we kind of shift that with at least our community. So people aren't, aren't, yes. feet, aren't making those associations. All right. What about you, Rachel? What advice would you give? I mean, the thing that I have realized is that I feel like I'm going to barf at every money goal. <laughs> <laughs> like when I always tell money... everyone, you're right on track if you yeah, feel nauseous. But, like, but seriously, like when my money goal was $10,000, yeah. it felt like I was going to die. Right? And then I just keep seeing I, it I actually over... remember this vividly. <laughs> So fascinating, right? And we add a zero and then you want to barf again. And then we yeah. add another zero, right? Exactly. No, I'm sure I was really trying to convince you that I'm like, Brooke, I'm really going to die. You don't understand. <laughs> totally. And, and so the more that I have realized that, the more it's like, okay, so maybe you're just going to feel like this every time because this is you evolving into the next version of yourself. This yeah. is you, you know, stepping out of what is comfortable and into discomfort and that's okay, Mm -hmm. but why not just have big goals? Yes. If it's going to feel that way. Yeah. I mean, you always say this, like, why not blow your mind? And that's what, that's what I just have really started to embrace. I'm going to, I'm going to feel this way. Yeah. So let's see who I can become. That's so fun because people say all the time to me, like, why do you need to make a hundred million dollars? And I'm like, 
okay, listen to me. Nobody needs to make $100 million. That's a ridiculous question. I don't need to make $100 million. I don't need to make any more money. But you know what I love doing in my life is blowing my own damn mind. How fun is it to know that I'm going to make $100 million? That will be delightful to me to be able to have enough management of my mind and my purpose in my life to be an example of what is possible If I can make a hundred million dollars with a model, you know how many more people are going to listen to me and be like, okay, this is getting a little out of control. What is this model thing? I'm ready. (laughs) But also I just want to add, I mean, one piece that we haven't talked about is a lot of us are mothers. I had a baby six months ago. Right. It's crazy to me that I'm working from home and I had my most successful year ever yes. the same time I gave birth for yes. the very first time. That's yes. crazy. It's so and, awesome. And it's not the message that we get. Right. Right. And that's what I think you're offering that is so powerful. It's like, it doesn't matter. You can just do it. Yes. Right. And I think a lot of us are afraid to do it, right? A lot of us are afraid to set those big goals. And so what we say instead, instead of saying, I'm afraid, we say, oh, my family's my priority or something else is my priority and I don't want to do that because money doesn't matter to me. Now, listen, for some of you, that's true and genuine and amen to that. But for some of you and you know who you are, you're using that as an excuse and you don't need to. You really don't need to. You don't have to, in order to have big money goals and achieve great things, you don't have to kill yourself and work all the time. There is a way to balance it out and it's all with coaching in your mind. Okay. What do you have, Brenda? What's your advice? Well, I mean, I really believe that there's no downside to believing in whatever you want to believe in. Yes. There's no downside in believing when I wanted to leave my job and make six figures. There was no downside to believing it last year when my goal was 350K. There's really no downside. And like, I really, I was actually thinking about this in January. January was a special month, let me tell you. (laughs) But that keeps happening when you're always setting bigger goals. Yeah. I really thought about it because, you know, I mentioned earlier, I was like, oh my gosh, why did I even share my big goal? Like I shared it on with my clients and on my, and and my colleagues, like, and I started thinking about it and I'm like, why? Like, okay, worst case scenario, literally you like, don't have a single client, you make zero dollars. I was still thinking like, that's still no downside because I still like I'm going all in on myself. And you know, like, what else is my life for than I think to like really live it? Do I really like is life about just like rinse and repeat and feeling quote unquote comfortable and comfortable in the sense that like, everything's the same thing repeated every day. And you're maybe just always like, winning. You're always, you just pull the lever on yeah. the, the casino machine and you're just ding, 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 yeah, ding, like all repeat. the time, right? I think there's a movie called like Groundhog Day or something, <laughs> like same day every day. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, there Many really is no downside. Life, right? Yeah. What was that? Many people are living that life. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be like, if I was just like, you know what, let me just go back in the cocoon. That, that would be it. That would be literally the only reason. And I'm like, no, that's not it. So I just really think there's no downside to believing in whatever you want to believe in, whether that's, you know, I coach on losing the last 10 pounds and like really ending your struggle with weight and food. And I actually get the same question asked. I've had several people ask me like, don't you feel nervous like telling people that they can get all the way to their goal, even if they have not in like 20 years? And I'm like, no. It's awesome. Y- yeah. And I really do believe it. Like I believe I can look into any of my clients' eyes as I'm speaking to them and like, really, you can believe that thing and make it happen. You know, it comes with commitment, consistency, working through your doubts and all those things. But the upside of believing in in whatever you want to believe in, whether it's money or weight or relation, yeah. whatever it is, is that you open yourself to that possibility of something new versus the same thing on repeat. That's right. Especially if the same thing on repeat is not something you are really wanting on purpose. <laughs> exactly. So, and here's the trick, right? And I love the example you're giving. It's easy to set a goal. Okay. Lots of people do it all the time. I want to lose a hundred pounds. I want to make a million dollars, especially people that have never made $1 before. I want to make a million dollars. I want to lose a hundred pounds. And they haven't even (laughs) heard anything. It's like, okay, it's easy to set the goal and it's actually easy to believe in it before you've attempted it. Most of my clients do, 
the can you believe in it when January isn't what you thought January was going to be? Mm-hmm. That's when it's like you watch your brain go, well, even if I don't meet it, well, even if it doesn't happen, I'm going to be okay. And at that moment, you have to stop and be like, but I am going to do it. Right. I don't know how I'm going to do it. And January didn't look great, but I'm still going to do it. And it's believing in something when you have no business believing in it. Yeah. Like there's That's no evidence to be seen yes. anywhere near you. <laughs> yes. When you've been on a protocol for six weeks and you haven't lost one pound, but you still believe this is the answer to your weight loss. You have yeah. no business believing it because there's no evidence. That's the magic. That's the skill. That yeah. is the how right? You want to know the exact tactics of how you get there? You'll find out as soon as you get there. But if you want to know the how, it's believing when you have no business believing and taking action through that belief system. That yeah, is- that's when you have to like believe hard. Like, yes. I mean, really, your belief has to be, I love the word Rachel used earlier about unstoppable. That's actually yeah. one of my favorite feelings to generate is just like feeling unstoppable. Because then the action that is like you just keep taking action. Nothing's going to stop you. Yep. I, I was going to give an example. I had a client who just started my program on Monday. And then it's funny, like three days in, I love the feedback she gave me. She's like, Brenda. And she's like, I'm only half joking. But seriously, I feel like I've been eating healthy for three days. And like, I'm not at my goal yet. <laughs> And I was like, I love that she said that. And I told her that I love that she said that because she just said it where most people are just thinking it and then yes. give up. Yes. But like when she said it, she could see kind of like how, you know, it just didn't logically make sense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Like that's what most people do, whether the goal's a million or a hundred. And maybe your, your kind of expectation is in three days, but maybe it's two months. Yeah. And then when it doesn't happen when you want it to happen, that's when most people throw in the towel and then, you know, want to use being realistic or unrealistic or reasonable, not, you know, unreasonable. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's so true. And so I love your example of, you know, being in the space where you set the goal and then immediately, (laughs) why did I do that? Why did I tell people? Why did I say, well, I should, you know, and for me, This is how this process works for every, and nobody is immune to this. No one, Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what it is, right? As soon as you say, I'm going to do this goal, then something's not going to work out. Something's going to break. Your computer's going to break down. Your launch isn't going to work the way you wanted it to do. And then you're going to want to keep believing. And you'll say, okay, I'm going to keep believing. And then you're going to feel yourself want to hustle and overwork and compensate and go crazy and stay up all night and start, like Stacy was saying, figure out in the middle of the night. So you notice that you're not believing, you choose to believe again, and then you have to take a deep breath. And what I say is, remember, Brooke, it has to be fun or forget it. If it's mm, not fun, mm-hmm. we're not doing it. And that calms me right down. And amazingly, that's when I get the good ideas. When you're yeah. hustling and running around like a crazy person, you're not going to make a million dollars. You can't hustle your way to a million, my friend. All right, Corinne, what you got? Well, y'all all just stole all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I I was going to talk about like the mistakes. You kind of just led right into it. It's you have to understand that in order to make a lot of money, you're going to have to try a lot of things Mm -hmm. and a lot of things are not going to go the way you think they should. And I think the key is learning how to work on your self judgment. There's such a difference between judging yourself and judging where you're going and your fear and then assessing and thinking and then deliberately taking next steps. And I think that hustle comes in when it's, I, this isn't working the way I thought it should. And I think hustle mode is fueled by fear. Of course. It's all scarcity and fear. Anxiety, yeah. When you catch yourself in, like, I just think that building a business is the best way to figure out how to start internally liking yourself. Yes. I mean, I thought it was with weight loss. That's My business start. has really taught me how to like, <laughs> like myself because you're yeah. putting it out there for everyone. Like you start, you know, it's not just about your weight loss now. It's about my business is about how am I changing lives and, you know, how am I growing as a person? How am I serving? And then on top of all that, I've got to figure out the tech stuff too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's just such a good lesson. And I just, I think the listeners should just know, like, it's a lot of work. It's all that kind of stuff, but it's, 
really important to just stick with it, to believe in yourself, but also to just know it's not going to go smooth. It's not ever supposed to go smooth. And when it's not going smooth, you know, you're doing the work. That's when you know you're showing up for yourself. That's right. Right. And I think, you know, we sit here and have a conversation about how we're making millions of dollars and everyone thinks that because we're talking about it and laughing about it, that we feel great all of the time. No. Um, the one last thing I want to say, and this is kind of for you, Corinne, too, is everybody thinks that they're the exception to this rule, right? And Corinne was one of them, right? She's like, you don't understand. She told me, I can't even tell you how many times she said, you don't understand. My girls are this way and my community's this way and my mm-hmm. people can only afford this much and I'm different because of this. If you are feeling that way, if you are hearing us talking, well, easy for you to say you have weight loss as your clients, right? Okay, over drinking, y'all, come on. Like people were always for the longest time telling me, oh, the reason, Brooke, you make money is because you sell an opportunity for other people to make money. I have to tell you guys, that was one of the reasons why I started Scholars. So I was like, come on, y'all. Look how many people want coaching. Are you kidding me? You don't have to sell a business opportunity in order to serve people that need emotional health. Have you looked at the world? (laughs) <laughs> Hello, <laughs> right? So if you're thinking, if you're listening to this and you think you're a special exception, if you think your clients won't let you, you know, charge them or raise your prices or whatever, I just want to tell you that you're wrong. It has nothing to do with your client. It has everything to do with you. So stop blaming your business. Stop blaming your clients. Stop blaming everyone around you. And the only reason I'm telling you that is to kind of kick your butt, but also so you'll take it back to yourself and take full responsibility. There's absolutely no reason why you can't make a million dollars. Right. No reason at all all of you listening. Now, some of you is like, well, except for me. <laughs> you know there's someone listening that's like, but not me. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to you. You could. I'm not saying you should. I'm not saying you have to. But if you've never considered the possibility, I want you to consider it. That there could be a day, not too far from now, where you could say, I listened to this podcast and this woman told me I could make a million dollars and now I just made a million dollars. That is how the world works, my friends. If you believe something is possible. So, I brought all my friends. I appreciate you guys coming here and taking your time. We're like after work hours at seven o'clock at night for me. So it's later for some of y'all to share this message with everyone because I think it's super important. And I appreciate you guys being so transparent with all of your numbers and being willing to share. If you want to hire these ladies, if you want to learn more about them, they do not coach on business. So we're talking business here, but these coaches are not business coaches. <laughs> Every time I talk about business on the podcast, they get phone calls or uh, emails from people saying, hey, will you coach me on my business? They don't do that, but they do coach amazingly on weight loss, over drinking. Oh, and actually Stacy does, <laughs> does actually coach on business, on selling. So if you're a life coach and you want to make your first $2,000, there is no better program in the world than Stacy's. So go to stacybayman.com and sign up for her 2K program. There's, I mean, just do it. That's it. <laughs> That's Thank how I sell. <laughs> if you don't do it, you're crazy. <laughs> Recommendation. Because here's the thing. You sign up. You pay her $2,000. If you don't make $2,000, she gives you your $2,000 back. What is wrong with you? Sign up for that. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> if you're already making more than that, Stacy has her own mastermind program, very similar to this. If you are on your way to making 100K to 200K, she has a program for that as well. So if you want business coaching, she is your woman. She understands the model inside and out. So everything's very aligned with what I teach as well. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Hey, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, you have to come check out Self Coaching Scholars. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and we apply it we take it to the next level and we study it. Join me over at the lifecoachschool.com forward slash join. Make sure you type in the the T H E lifecoachschool.com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join me in self coaching scholars. See you there.